What's up guys, Carl Thomas here with another video and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple two deck mix in Ableton Live. We're going to jump on the computer and I'm going to show you how I put mixes together. Now before you jump at me in the comments and say that's cheating, you shouldn't be using software, you should be recording your mixes live. I used to make all my mixes live. I used to plan out the set, go on the decks, hit record and then DJ as if I was DJing to a crowd. However, it was a really inefficient use of time. I felt it was anyway. And the reason why is because I'd get 20 to 30 minutes into the mix and a particular mix, transition, whatever it would be, didn't quite sit right. And I felt that at the end of the mix, I didn't have one of good enough quality to put out on SoundCloud or MixCloud. And as a result, the whole hour that I spent recording was wasted and I've got absolutely nothing out of it. So as a result, I now do everything in Ableton because you can just put it together, everything sounds good, and then it's ready to go out. It's just a far more efficient use of time. So let's jump on the computer and I will show you how I put a simple two deck mix together. So here we are in Ableton 10. Now you don't actually have to use Ableton 10 um, you can use 9, you can use 8, and this is the standard version. I don't have the suite, but to be honest, you probably don't even need to spend out on the full standard version. You can probably get away with the intro version. So stage one of making the mix in Ableton is setting up the project. So it's ready to go and you can just crack on with putting the mix together. So just want to draw your attention to a few different things. First and foremost, there's the BPM of the timeline. As you can see here in the top left, it's set to 125 BPM. You can change this to whatever you want that to be. This is going to be a house music mix. And whilst there are gonna be some slight fluctuations in BPM of the tracks, they more or less sit around the 125 BPM mark. So the project being 125 BPM is absolutely fine. The other thing to note is that you're going to need this view of Ableton, which is known as the arrangement view. It's the traditional production view of Ableton and um, essentially the, um, the clips or the audio tracks all work across the page horizontally. If you find yourself in this, um, if you find yourself in this view, just click on the right hand side here to take you to the arrangement view. Now for this mix, it's a simple two deck mix. So for that, we're going to need two audio channels. As you can see um, here, I have the two audio channels. You can add as many audio channels as you want. So if you wanted a, a three deck mix, you just click on the, um, the, the right, uh, just right click here and add in a new audio track. But for today, we're gonna to keep it simple. It's a two deck mix. Now you'll notice I do actually have a third audio track here at the bottom. This is not used as part of the mix. It's actually used to really as a bit of a tune dump, if that makes sense. So I dump all of my tunes into a third audio track. Um, and then I work from here. This was actually a top tip given to me by a, a producer mate of mine, Tempo Electric, because if you have all of your tracks dumped in one place, essentially they can be analyzing whilst you're already starting work on the mix. So um, yeah, it's, it's massively improved my efficiency. In terms of the audio tracks, what I do is I take down the volume of each of the channels a little bit, just to about minus six dB, and it just uh, prevents the, uh, the master from clipping. And then on the master channel here, all I do is throw a limiter on it, as you can see. The limiter, you just double click the audio effects that Ableton give you, and I just use the, the standard limiter that Ableton have, have provided. On, in terms of the audio tracks, just quickly going back here, I add on, uh, for this mix, I've added on an EQ3, which is like a, a mixer, standard mixer, bass, mids and highs. And also as well, I've uh, added a delay, which I will use to um, help with the transitions. That's pretty much it. I'm keeping things really, really simple. And that is everything set up in terms of the, the screen. As you can see here, the next thing to do would be to import all of your, your music. So I've got them all lined up here. That 
you can import them just using a USB stick and just dump them into Ableton. At this moment in time, that's the easiest thing to do. Once they are all imported and you have them in one place, you then just need to make sure that they're analyzed correctly uh, by Ableton. Now, Ableton is very good at analyzing music. All I would recommend is just clicking on the waveform here. By the way, if the waveform doesn't show up, just click in this bottom right hand corner. You can flip between the, the channel um, and, and the different audio effects on the channel and uh, the waveform. So zoom in a little bit, make sure you get the magnifying glass up. Just click the plus a few times and make sure here on the left hand menu that the um, BPM is first and foremost correct. If you're not sure of the BPM, just double check where you downloaded it from. Uh, DJ City or uh, Beatport, for example, will tell you the BPM. If it isn't correct, just change it accordingly. So that is not the BPM of the project at the top. That is the BPM of the individual track. If you're analyzing house music, which is just a four beats to each bar scenario, then Ableton is usually very accurate but just double check this and also make sure that the algorithm used to analyze your track is set to complex. This normally is set to beats by default. Um, I'm not going to go into the science behind it. Let's just um, say it just sounds better in complex, especially if you've got vocals, it just seems to sound better. That is pretty much it. The only other thing to um, check in terms of the analysis is for dance music, you don't need to, a lot of people will say you need to put in warp markers, which are these little yellow boxes. And you can add these in by double clicking on each, um, you know, each part you want to warp. However, you really don't need them for dance music. If you, um, you, you can just um, go to the first one, uh, right click and warp from here straight and that will warp the entire track usually correctly. Um, and then all you would want to do is just double check that the kick drums just sit um, in line with the beat grid here. So that, that will ensure that it's all quantized correctly. And that looks all fine and good to go. And essentially then what you wanna do is repeat this process for each of your other tracks. The only time you may need to set individual warp markers and warp points along the entire track is if you have, for example, a track that varies in BPM, varies in tempo, and um, or perhaps they use real instruments like live instruments and you want to quantize it completely. So for example, something that, uh, something that hasn't been quantized previously in a studio because it's like a band recording or anything like that, then you know in order to quantize it you will need to set up more warp markers but for electronic dance music everything is pretty much quantized and good to go so once you've done all that the setup is done and you're ready to make your mix and essentially it's as simple as dragging and dropping the music so we're going to do pop that drum as the first track in the mix and then hold up will be next. Now, what you want to do is, this is essentially go, deck one going into deck two, is zoom in on the, um, on the track. So you see the waveform, and then you'll want to just line up the waveforms and make sure that everything looks correct. So you can zoom right in and just have a play around with it. It's just a case of dragging and dropping and making sure that the phrases line up and you're happy with it essentially. So let's have a listen to that and see what that sounds like. You ready here? Come on. And then essentially it's just a case of playing around and making sure number one everything's in time and it sounds good but also as well making sure that the phrases match up and if you're happy with it then that's all good. Once you've made the mix 
Um, you then can add in like your EQs to make everything sound a lot better. So if you, in Ableton 10, you need to click A for what's known as automation. In Ableton 9, it's all a little bit simpler and it all seems to be um, under one menu. But essentially, all you need to do to EQ it is select your EQ3 from the, uh, the, top, uh, the top right here. And you can see here the low frequency is switched on. We switch to EQ3 and you can see here the low frequency is switched off. Now usually to keep things really easy, when I'm making a mix in Ableton, I will get to a point where I just want to swap out the bass lines. So for here, because the tracks just marry up quite nicely, I'm just going to add in the uh, the bass when this cut uh, when the, when this track cuts out and then the other thing what I might do is as this is fading out I'm going to add a little bit of a delay so we'll click the delay here add the dry wet option and we'll just click an entry point and an exit point that's the only other thing to mention when you're doing audio effects on Ableton for automation you need to select an entry point and an exit point so if you notice here there's a little dot that's the uh, the entry point but because we haven't got uh, an exit point um, it's just on the whole time so if you click again you can see we've got another one there and then you can um, essentially draw so you can drag and drop it with your mouse so we've got the entry point there, the exit point there, and I'm just gonna click up with the exit point. And then because we want the next mix to not have this delay effect, we'll just bring it straight back down again. And let's have a listen to how that outro sounds. And that just sounds quite nice. You can play around with it. So on this delay, for example, I've just got it set to the factory settings, but you can switch it to ping pong delay and then it will um, move from speaker to speaker. So let's listen to that. The only last thing that I'm going to do to make it sound a little bit tidier is just remove the bass as the delay cuts in. So let's have a listen to that. And that sounds like quite a good mix. So you can just play around with it as I did there. So just playing around with a bit with the EQ, playing around with a little bit on the delay. Now that is a very, very simple mix just from one into the other. You can make this as creative as you want to. As long as the tracks are all quantized correctly, you can essentially jump in and out of tracks all over the place and make the mix as complex and as creative as you want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish making this mix and I will show you the finished product. Okay, so I've been working on that mix now and if I just zoom out a little bit, you can see where I've got all of the tracks now. So we go from one to two, back up to one again, back to two, one, two. This is a very, very simple mix that I've, I've made here. And that is essentially it. Just have a play round with Ableton and it's just essentially like fading one track in, into the next. And this is ideal for something like a, a mixed radio show. If you want to do like a, a podcast with a mix, some, some guys do that uh, along with some chat. Um, and, and that is way more efficient in my opinion than making a mix live, recording a mix live. Um, and it is as simple as dragging and dropping these tunes as long as everything's quantized. If you want to vary up the tempo 
of your mix, perhaps you're mixing from R&B into house and then back again, don't adjust the BPM at the top here. This is the BPM for the whole project, the whole timeline. What you want to do is adjust the tempo on the master channel as you can see here at the bottom. So if you're going from R&B, which might be a 90 to a 128, um, for example, 90 will be your starting point, so you want to start it there. And then if you create an exit, sort of like an entry point there and an exit point there, you can see there, just like when we adjusted the delay, the change in BPM. You're essentially changing the BPM over time because time is left to right. So that is the easiest way to do it. It's quite simple, but that's just, uh, we haven't obviously done that for today's mix, but just if you want to um, mix things up a little bit in terms of speed of the tracks. Once you've got your mix completed and you're completely happy with it, if you select file and then export audio video, here um, the, the rendered track is the master. Always make sure your mix starts at 111 and then that just goes to the end of your mix. Export as a WAV file there, and as soon as you click export, that will create a WAV file with your mix all in one, and then it is good to post. Now, in terms of mastering, you don't necessarily need to always master like mixes like this. I would recommend having a break from it, coming back to it, and having a listen through some headphones or some speakers to see if you're happy with how it sounds, if the levels all sound good. But essentially, that's all you need to do is file and export. That will create a WAV file for you, and that is then ready to upload onto Mixcloud SoundCloud. So there we have it guys, that is a simple two deck mix that I have put together in Ableton. Now, that workflow works for me. And of course, you know, you can be as creative as you want. You can do a three deck mix, you do a four deck mix, even five and six, the, the possibilities are endless. And I think that once you get into the swing of making mixes, you'll find a, a workflow that works for you. You don't have to follow this method. This is just one way of putting a mix together. Hope you found the video useful and enjoyable. If you do like this type of thing, please do give me a little thumbs up down below. It's much appreciated. And I will see you in the next video.